Joining us now is April Ryan, CNN political analyst and White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Networks. Uh, also joining us, CNN political commentators, former Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, Joe Lockhart, former Clinton White House press secretary, and Karen Finney, former senior spokesperson for Hillary for America. Errol, uh, April, I want to start with you, because this morning I think it is worthy of known. I'm not going to read the tweets, but the president is tweeting more about Elijah Cummings. He's tweeting more about prominent African Americans. He is leaning into this despite the criticism we just heard from Baltimore and despite the controversy we heard over the weekend. This is a choice he's making this morning. Why? It's a choice he's making uh, because he wants to get a certain part of America to vote for him. He wants to show a certain part of America that he's with them. You know, he says he's not a racist, but the racists believe he's a racist. And for someone like me, proud Baltimorean, born in Baltimore, still call that area home. It hurts. It hurts because that's a city, uh, an area that has so many different types of people. It's a community of love and of survival and overcoming. It's a, it's a community that's been hurt over and over again, but still we rise, like Maya Angelou says. Um, for this president to demean, to diminish, to discredit a community predominantly black, to say that, act as if it doesn't even belong to the United States, almost as if it was like Puerto Rico when he was throwing the towels as if, oh, I'm doing you a favor. He is the president of all America. He should not be doing this. He should be creating an urban renewal plan. He has the authority to do that. You know, there was, uh, Governor, you remember, you know, when Detroit was in such disarray, the White House, the Obama White House, put it in such a, uh, they put it in a special category to, to look over, to nurture it, to help it. Why can't this president think beyond the box and do that? This is an American city, just 36 miles from the White House. Why can't this president do that? He could create a state of emergency for a city like Baltimore, for a city like Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. He could be doing that right now. Instead, he's scoffing and laughing at it, all to appease his white base. It's not about his black base. He's trying to get 8% more. Well, he had 8% in the last election, praying that he'll get more. I doubt it now. But this is about a certain type of America. I would even say Mitch McConnell's America, Appalachia America, who did not realize ACA was Obamacare. You know, Governor, where are the Republicans? Where yeah. are the Republican colleagues of Elijah Cummings who have worked with him? Where is Congressman Mark Meadows, who yeah. would have us right. believe that he, that Elijah Cummings is a dear friend of his? So this morning, as the president is personally going after Elijah Cummings and Elijah Cummings, who in February, we remember, publicly went to bat for Mark Meadows when there was an implication yes. that Mark Meadows had done something racist. Elijah Cummings, unprompted, stood up for him. Let's remind people of what Elijah Cummings did in February. Mr. Meadows, you know, uh, and of all the people on this committee, uh, I've said it and got in trouble for it, that you're one of my best friends. I know that shocks a lot of people. And, and likewise, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Yeah, you are. And I would do, and I could see and feel your pain. I feel it. And so, and I don't think Ms. Salib intended to cause you that. Mark Meadows has had some time this weekend to come out and say something similar about Elijah Cummings. And nothing, nothing. And here's what I think every single Republican has to, who was elected and anybody in America has to think about. This president is attempting to divide urban and rural. This is terrible for America. Uh, Joe and I were just talking about this, you know, Joe Biden saying that this is about the soul of America, this election will be. Are we a United States of America or is he just going to divide city and stuff? We're here in Detroit. I'm waiting for Detroit to be the next city on the block because, on his chopping block, because it's majority African American. He's already gone after Chicago. That's we know right. that. Atlanta. I mean, how, how often are, are Republicans going to stand by and say, yeah, this is good for America to divide people like this? I have never seen a nation so divided. And I don't think electorally this is a good strategy for him. 
but it's certainly not a great strategy for the rest of the Republicans who are sitting on their hands because they're too afraid to come out and oppose the president. It's a choice. He clearly thinks it's a good strategy for him. Yeah, but is it? I mean, is it a 30-year-old mm -hmm. strategy that will work today? I mean, this, you know, this notion of allowing, giving permission for all of this divisiveness to come out is also giving permission for people to act on that divisiveness, which is why we've seen a significant increase in hate crimes over the since the president has been like a doubling since the president has been in office. He's giving permission yes. for people to be divided. Yes. And that is terrible for this nation. A Democratic strategist, Joe, yesterday suggested to me that one of the reasons the president is doing this, look, there can be a number of reasons. One can be that he's worried about the Mueller testimony. The second thing could be that he likes to tweet racist things. Yeah. Another one could be that there's a Democratic debate happening this week right behind us, and the president can't stand people talking about anyone else. Right. So he wants to make himself the focus of it and wind people up as they head into this moment. So if you're one of the Democrats who will be standing on this stage behind us in the next few days, they're faced with this every day during the campaign. What do you do? How do you deal with this? Yeah, I think you can't deal with every tweet, you know, that comes out. But you do, as as uh, the governor was just saying, have to frame in a way uh, that I think Biden has that this is a battle for America. This is not a this is not a new strategy, but it's a different strategy. Um, you know, Lee Atwater famously said that they learned in 1968 that. There is an appeal to white working class people on race, their resentment towards African Americans, towards Latinos. But they learned in the 68 and the 70s that they can't run around using the N word anymore. So they, yeah, learned yeah. To, they learned code words, dog whistles. What Donald Trump is doing is reverting back to the 1960s and saying, I'm, I'm going to be overt about this. I'm going to say, because he's betting that when push comes to shove, there is enough active racism in this country, that will be enough to get him elected. And he's not worried about the soul. He's worried about getting reelected. That's right. So I think the, the, the strategist you talked to was right. There's, a, there's, there's the narcissism here at play. He did want to get off Mueller because that was beginning to play badly. But this is not just a one or two day thing. We are going to see this now through mm -hmm. election day. And uh, it is, as Governor said, it is dangerous because someone's going to get hurt. And, and, and it's going to, and it's, and it's going to. I mean, there's a mass changed. shooting this morning. There's another yeah. mass shooting this morning at the Garlic Festival in an agricultural area mm -hmm. in California. The little boy who was six years old has a Hispanic last name. That's all we know. Yep. You know, I think there are a couple of things, though, here. Remember, this was the strategy in 2016. It was about race baiting. It was about taking advantage of people's fear of change, right? And what, so when people were saying things like, I'm afraid my kids won't have a better life than mine, what they were saying is, and what Donald Trump said, it's those people's fault. And he pointed at black people, and he pointed at Latinos, and he, and they, criticize women for the, our roles outside of the home now, right? He took advantage of those cultural anxieties. They were very bold and blunt and talking about it after the election, and then tried to make the argument that he was going to become the president of everybody. And we know that's actually not happened. That's not what he's interested in doing. I do think, though, having, having gone up against Donald Trump in 2016, these Democrats have to be very careful how much time you let yourself get into, dragged into fighting on his turf versus fighting on our turf in terms of, yes, he is a stain on this country. God willing, it will be, you know, a distant memory in some period of time, but we have to beat him. And part of the way we beat him, you have to address these kinds of comments, no question. At the same time, you then have to also try to think about how are you uniting the country? I think we need to be having that conversation. And I will say as a mixed race person whose parents are from the South, who thought, you know, we had moved past some of this, I surely believe we need to get back to some of that. And then third, what is your positive vision for the future? So I really think Democrats have to be careful how much time you spend playing on his turf because that was a big mistake, remember, that Republicans made in the primary in 2016. Governor, I just want to leave on this point, too. As someone who has won election in this state several times, you know, both as governor and attorney general, do you also have to be careful about telling Republican supporters or any supporters of President Trump that they're racist? Well, they, they may not be. They have to recognize that he is, though. And certainly racism and racist is 
is a word that nobody wants applied to them. And, and people justify saying, saying, I support the president. I, I don't agree with his tweets, but his economy is good. I think that we need to let people know that the longer he's in office, the more divided this country becomes. And yes, there are pockets of racists everywhere, right, including in Michigan. But I think, honestly, Michigan is better than that. It showed that in 2018. And if people are awake and understand that we have moved beyond this as a nation, they will come together and reject this, and this will be but a blip or a stain in our history that will be long forgotten after November of 2020.